This is the most deranged, unhinged week of my f***ing life. I'm Julia from Julia Tries Everything. You've probably seen me eat every single thing on the menu at your favorite chain restaurant. We're at Cracker Barrel right now. Look how many rocking chairs there are. We've never had eight like this on the table before. Welcome to Chili's! <laughs> you name a restaurant, I've most likely been there. You name it and I haven't been there. It's on my list, I promise. We're not doing that today. We're not doing that whatsoever. We are now in an episode of I ate like my dog for an entire week. Come here. We're gonna eat like you for the week. That means I'm gonna be eating breakfast and dinner with my dog Gus for the next five days. This is the least rewarding experience I've ever had. I know what you're thinking. Is she okay? Why is she doing this to herself? Do not worry. I am the one who pitched this and decided I love my dog. I love cooking and I love suffering. How do I put all three together? And this is what I've come up with. I'm in what, month 14 of pandemic times and this is how I'm entertaining myself and I suppose you all as well. We're going to be eating everything that a dog can eat and anything that a dog can't eat, AKA chocolate, grapes, alcohol, lemons, limes, garlic, onions, all of those are off the table. So rule number one is can't cook, can't make anything, that my dog cannot eat safely. I actually asked June from Budgie Eats what she would like rule number two to be because I'm always the one who makes rules for her and her show. And she said, I must eat every meal with Gus. And you know, I think that's really sweet and really kind. I don't think she understands how Gus eats. Yeah, I like the mint. It's like a little, oh, okay. Nope, nope. He's just really in the moment, but we're gonna try to eat together for every meal. Rule number three, I don't think any of us are trying to spend like over a hundred dollars on our dog in a week. So I'm gonna give myself a rough budget of trying not to go over a hundred dollars. I think that that's very possible. The types of ingredients and things that I need for this, I don't think I own most of it. So I'm gonna have to be starting off from nothing. So it might be a little bit more expensive than I anticipated. Before we get into anything else, I'm going to actually talk to a vet. Her name is Antoinette Martin. She's from Hello Ralphie, which is an access trusted virtual veterinary care. No crates, no weights, just great pet care. This is not an ad. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to her. We're gonna go do that. And then I'm gonna go grocery shopping. Antoinette? Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? so much for hanging out with me today. And I know it's a little strange, but I'm planning to eat like my dog for a week. Um, and so I love it. <laughs> Let's talk through it because I just get worried. There are so many sneaky ways that these ingredients that we, we think we're doing the right thing and we're actually grabbing for something that could be very dangerous. Just like in humans, you know, we have our, it, at the end of the day, it's calories in, calories out. And then depending on, you know, if you run six miles a day um, and you're, you know, the same height and weight as me and and I sit on the couch and watch Netflix, you know, we're going to have two very different total calorie needs. And it's the same thing for a dog. It's really not, you know, every dog this size needs a half a cup. It, it does have variability depending on, um, you know, their age, their breed, um, their activity level. I think that that really does help knowing that like, okay, making sure that I'm keeping the portion sizes, you know, small for him. <laughs> there are still hard and fast things that dogs cannot eat. Classic things we think of chocolate. I mean, chocolate we know is is dangerous to doggies. You know, garlic and onions, we know that those can cause issues with the red blood cells. Another few that I had seen were nut, certain nuts, like I saw almonds and macadamia nuts. And then I have cinnamon, nutmeg, and avocado. Are those all off the, all off <laughs> the, the shopping list? Yeah, when I think about avocado, I'm most concerned about the pit. If your doggie is used to eating a very low fat diet, um, you might run into some issues as far as uh, the, the the high fat content. Oh, for the meats. Because so I was thinking about if I put the chicken like on a skillet, the skillet needs some sort of oil so it doesn't stick yeah. to it. Yeah. But is that is that bad? If okay. he's eating a very low fat diet, then I would err on the side of caution um, as far as using a lot. It seems like I should go for lean meat. Does that seem correct? I would say that's a good place to start, you know, especially as we're transitioning over for wanting to do something a little bit different, um, staying towards the leaner meat. I was just kind of putting down all the possible proteins on this list that I sent you, which I put down as like eggs, salmon, turkey, pork, and I put sardines and ham. Ham can be pretty fatty, making sure the ham doesn't have a glaze on it. 
if we're doing any type of meat, just making really sure that there are no bones when it does end up in his plate or on your plate, you know, you know, to eat around them, him, not so much. The cheeses and the, the, the nuts, really, it's just that fat content to my knowledge is, is just making sure that it's in very small quantities. I mean, I would just be light and, and think about keeping it simple. How many of the pet parents that you talk to through Hello Ralphie make their own food for their pets? It is not super common. It is a commitment. And I applaud anyone who is, I can barely cook myself dinner. So um, people that, that are able to cook for their animals as well. I mean, it is a, a true you know show of, of love and care. I love a lot of the things that you have on your list as far as keep it simple. So, you know, fruits, vegetables, um, little chicken bits, things like that instead mm-hmm. of going for these crazy high calorie over the counter um, dog treats. Well, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. You ready f- for your deluxe day one? I feel like he doesn't care at all. I feel like I'm going to be cooking for hours and it's not going to matter. I have given a rough outline of what I think I'm going to make. And let's go shopping. Do you want to come with? Neither have xylitol in them. So I think we're gonna go with Smuckers. I'm back from the grocery store. So this is everything I got for five days of eating like us. June's gonna be really, really mad at me. The grand total was $73.19. I feel like I could have done way better. I'm probably not gonna use all $73 on this one shoot. So it might end up being like $50. I hope less than $50 for five days. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Please, please don't be mad. I tried. We have ricotta, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, vegetable oil, sweet peas, brown rice, bananas, white rice flour, strawberries, blueberries, cheese, mozzarella. We have basil and we have mint, all purpose flour, eggs, potato, Jen's favorite peanut butter, cauliflower, celery, carrots, it's some very cheap veal, I don't know, and some ground turkey from our favorite. Just kidding. I already had quick oats ready to go, a huge, huge container of it that I've had for months. Pumpkin puree, because you always have to have pumpkin puree on hand when you have a dog. And then I always have frozen chicken breasts in my freezer, just in case for any moment that Gus gets sick. Um, A lot of times vets tell you to use boneless, skinless chicken breasts and just boil it. This is all stuff that your dog can eat. Lovely. Our first meal of the day, I'm gonna call it brunch. Um, We're gonna have brunch with Gus. Let's get to cleaning our produce. When it comes to checking your produce, in this situation, since I'm checking it for me and my dog, I wanna be extra, extra careful. Isn't that kind of funny? I wanna be more careful when I'm feeding my dog than I do myself. Hmm, does he want a crunchy bit or does he want a leafy bit? Maybe he wants a crunch. Gus! Gus! Gus, Gus! Gus, I beckon you. Sir, yes, it's a little bit of cauliflower leaf. Can you tell me what you think? Oh, do you want the whole thing? Okay. You're not really like doing anything with it. Okay, so it looks like he's just like (laughs) putting it in his mouth and spitting it back out. This feels like a bit of an omen to start the week. No, it's a no-go on Team Gus, so noted. For our first meal of the day, brunch is gonna be a banana, maybe some blueberry rice flour pancake? I don't know. Um, let's let's attempt it and see how this goes. You want to make sure that you're mashing until it's like almost over mashed because banana's a little fibrous and we want these pancakes to be as smooth as we can. Up next, I'm gonna do a half a cup of white rice flour. We're gonna use some baking powder. I'm gonna use two eggs for this. And from here, this is when you would typically add like all of your fun cinnamon, vanilla flavoring in here. However, since I'm making this for a dog, so I'm just gonna do like a very light hand on here and hope that that's okay. (laughs) 
I was gonna just put the peanut butter on top and have it as if it was maple syrup in a way, but I think I wanna add a little bit to the batter and then also have some on the top because Gus loves peanut butter, I love peanut butter. Why not? One thing that you need to know about Gus is his obsession with peanut butter. It's almost like his entire mind goes blank while he's eating it. He can smell the jar being opened, not hear it, but smell it. He knows exactly when the good stuff is coming out. I'm gonna say that he cleaned that knife pretty well. One thing that I remember from talking to our vet this morning, Antoinette, was to be very sparing with your fat usage. So it's okay to use butter and oil in your dog's cooking. Just be really, really careful with how much you're adding. Okay, okay. So I'll put one blueberry on each for him. Flip. I'm gonna have my first bite. You finished it all. And now you're looking at mine. This is the least rewarding experience I've ever had. All right, my review of these are, it's like nice and actually dense. Like it looks dense, but it's actually very light and fluffy. I didn't know what I was gonna get out of a rice flour pancake, but you can actually smell the peanut butter in there. But the blueberries are amazing in here. I got some good blueberries today. I would eat this for breakfast. I don't know if I would even consider this dog food. When I think of dog food, I think super bland, super dry, like you need to chug water while you're having it. I do need to drink a little bit of water, but I don't know, that's pretty good. What you think? I don't know if I can give you more. I did make mini pancakes. Cause I thought these would be really cute treats for him. Oh yeah, actually you even tried the pancake on its own. Okay, pancake on its own. That was good. I think he liked the peanut butter that I put on it. I kind of cheated a little bit. I knew how he was gonna react to it if I put peanut butter on it. What did you think of breakfast? If you had to give it out of 10 bones, how many bones would you give it? Yes? So I'm gonna give it a solid eight. I think Gus is gonna decide between here's 7.5 and here's 8.5, okay? Go ahead. Oh. Okay, so he went for the 8.5 first. Thanks, bud. High five. Okay. Dinner time. Okay, it is approximately 4.33 p.m. on day one. For our day one dinner one is a puppy Oli. I'm gonna think of a better name after this, I'm sure. But what I'm gonna do is a raviolo that is with all-purpose flour, egg and what salt and i'm thinking a whipped ricotta and then maybe i'm adding some of the basil that i got from that putting that in there because i have to be really careful with the amount of salt and pepper i'm using because dogs don't really eat much of a seasoning so i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna add to the whipped ricotta so there's more flavor and i'm gonna do an egg yolk in the middle and have it as a little nest and make that a little raviolo i think they'll be really cute and then i'm gonna maybe put some like meat or something this whole dog no fat no oil no salt no pepper life is going to be really challenging what we're going to start with first is we're going to take our eggs and we're going to separate them it broke we will find a purpose for you i already have dough that i had from a few weeks ago if you're making dough at home just like i did before you're taking flour and eggs and salt and you're just gonna make this big sticky mess and just keep putting it together adding more flour until you finally get a really beautiful dough like so so what we have here is a beautifully translucent raviolo dough to work with we're gonna put them really close together the more that you can kind of flip them and do very light dustings of flour the better you're gonna be I'm gonna make whipped ricotta with honey and mint. Honey is something that you're allowed to feed your dogs and so is mint. I don't know if Gus likes mint, um, we'll find out. Are you supervising from above? 
Okay, well, I'm gonna keep cooking. Hi, would you like a mint? Would you like it? Here, I give you a small piece. Here. No. Oh. oh no. Here, come here. Oh. What? Eat it. What's wrong, buddy? Try the mint. Try it. <sighs> this is not a good sign. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, he likes it. Success. We are letting our ricotta freeze and we are just chilling for a second. I'm gonna take some of this veal, not all, but maybe one slice of it. I don't know. I know, I'm gonna take the veal. I'm gonna make some crispy bits, I think. I've never cooked with veal before. For right now, I'm gonna try to just make it super crispy. I'm gonna take a little bit of flour, salt, and pepper. I'm gonna take the veal, I'm gonna cut it into slices, I'm gonna drag it through there, and then I'm gonna try to crisp it up. I don't know why I was thinking it would be like bacon, and I'd be able to kind of crisp it up and make it into little pieces. But as soon as it hit the pan, I realized my error, and I decided to take the other batch of the veal and cut it up into pieces, and then put cornstarch on top of the flour, because I was like, it just, I think it needs a good crunch to it. I'm just gonna try the pieces that I did like this and see if I achieved anything. You know, it's not that bad. It's very flavorless. Now I'm gonna try one of these. There's a crunch, there's a crunch. Lesson learned, I should have just done the ground turkey that I had. I'm still gonna use this as a topping. It's, it felt, it just felt very fancy, but Sometimes fancy isn't the way to go. I'm extremely hungry. I haven't really eaten today besides like two baby pancakes. So I'm gonna have a rule break. Don't look at me like that. Why do you look at me with such guilt and disdain? <coughs> he knows what I've done. It is 10 minutes until Gus's dinner time. And he is making sure that it is very well known. So what I'm gonna do now is just assemble. What we're gonna do is take the ravioli circles. We're going to put a little nest of our whipped ricotta. We're gonna pipe it. Then we're gonna be very, very careful with putting our yolks into the nest. It needs to be cradled, it needs to be loved, just like your dog. So from there, we're then going to take the ravioli circles put them on top, pinch them together, either with our hands or a fork. Oh, one thing I didn't say. I'm gonna take my water when I'm boiling it and I'm gonna put chicken bouillon in it. There's not gonna be much flavor in this raviolo. So I'm thinking if I can kind of make the water like a chicken broth, I think that that could make it have a little bit more oomph. Hungry? Oh, do you have a reservation? You don't? It's okay. Do you mind sitting inside? <coughs> oh, okay. Do you remember how to sit in the chair? There we go. Yeah, we did it earlier. Tonight I made you a raviolo with a little bit of parm and a piece of veal. Here, let me cut it for you. Sure, that's a way to eat it. Okay, well, how was your day? He was very busy. Wow. Wow, yeah, a little undercooked. That's my fault. Yeah, I like the mint. It's like a little, oh, okay. Nope, nope. <laughs> Don't eat the, what? Okay, let's take this into pieces, okay? Not the whole thing. No, no, not the whole thing. Okay. If he continues looking in the bowl for at least 10 more seconds, we're gonna consider this a 10 out of 10. Zach, please put the timer on. Mm. Oh, I'm not looking in the bowl anymore. It was good? Mm-hmm. I would say it's pretty light, right? I think I need the veal with it. Mmm. The veal is key. Yep. 
What I will say about this is that I was worried that the veal was gonna be a failure, but it actually adds a really lovely savory flavor that complements the honey and the mint. I definitely undercooked the pasta. This felt really like a luxury moment. I'm gonna take this with some salt and pepper. The way that it just, oh. Sorry if you don't like runny yolks. I love runny yolks. I would love to lie to you guys and say it makes it a 10 out of 10, but I don't think it does. I'm gonna give this 9.1 out of 10. I think Gus is gonna give it, I would say a 9.9. .9. He was really into it, but he's definitely docking 0.1 because it was difficult for him to eat. So he's still getting his actual dinner kibble. He can have 10% of his diet be cookies, treats, this diet that we are doing right now, eat, and the rest really needs to, be st needs to stick to the kibble that he's used to because his stomach is sensitive and we don't wanna completely throw off his entire nutrition. Good morning, guys. You ready for another day of luxury? Oh, you just can't bear it. Hello and good morning. To be totally honest with you, it's actually not morning at all. It's 4 p.m. Woke up at 6 a.m. and realized I had pink eye. If I dare get closer to the camera so you guys can see my pink eye. Oh God, it hurts. We're gonna take it very easy today. Greek yogurt, peanut butter, blueberry, banana, popsicles. And I said, I said that with a question mark at the end, didn't I? <laughs> Cause I'm not sure if it'll work. I have strawberries and I have blueberries and I have my mint still. I might make a strawberry mint puree just to add a little bit more color to the popsicles. Kind of looks like salsa, doesn't it? Very tart. Mm. Gussie, are you allowed to have sugar? Can dogs have sugar? Oh. It says that sugar is just as bad for dogs as it is for humans. We're gonna put a little bit of sugar in here, guys. Okay, it, it tastes way better. That, it was needed. You like it? Yeah? So it's gonna be a layer of some really great thick Greek yogurt, our lovely Smucker's peanut butter that June says is one of the best. Oh, look how clean. Then some blueberries and just keep doing that layer until we fill up the Dixie cup. And let's top it off with some Greek yogurt, why don't we? We have the popsicles sit in the freezer for like two hours. I also had another idea. I wanna make a banana Hasselbeck and put peanut butter in it. I feel like that could be delicious or just atrocious. Slicing really, really thin into a banana. Try to do a little bit of those thin slices in there and then slather it in heated up warmed peanut butter so it gets just really in there. What I'm gonna do is dust it with cinnamon and I might have brown sugar. If I don't, I'll just use regular sugar and throw it in the oven and see what happens. <gasps> oh, you're beautiful. And a bigger bit for mom. All right, buddy. Gus, what I have prepared for you today is a banana Hasselbeck coated in peanut butter and a little bit of sugar and cinnamon. Yours has no sugar because I'm not trying to kill you. Here you go, sir. So that's how good it was. Gosh, that's good. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry you can't have the crunchy brown sugar. It's so good. I don't think, I think he's kind of indifferent about it. Gus, what do you think about it? He does not care. I think he gives it like a seven. Gus, you give it a seven? I'm giving this a 10. This was so easy to do. The crunchy brown sugar. Oh, and then the, I don't think you actually need to slice the banana the way I did, but it definitely makes it more of an, like a masterpiece artful work. It is a breadless banana bread. That's the best way I can put it. This is Gus's favorite place to hide. This is a good angle to supervise. 
You're literally watching me. Oh, I see. This is nice. We are back. I'm only showing you half my face because the other half is still pink from my pink eye from this morning, which is so great and we're so happy about it. The popsicles have been in the freezer for about an hour and a half and they look like they're already ready to go. So I'm going to take it out and we're gonna do a little taste test. You comfortable? Oh, you comfortable? Here, I tuck you in. What I have for you this evening is a strawberry and mint pureed Greek yogurt banana popsicle, okay? So take some nits. Yummy breakfast, right? And there's a little banana on the bottom. See that? You see the banana on the bottom? Oh wow, that strawberry mint like tastes like a mojito. Oh, look, the blueberries in there. Those look pretty. I gonna say, this is good for the summertime. You're getting a whole, your whole breakfast on a stick. Took zero time to make, but I'm not really enthused by it. I don't feel like it's that like amazing. It's not that fantastic. The whole stick thing, I'm giving it a five, but for Gus, I feel like he's just looking at it because it's in front of him as well. I don't know if he really cares about it. Yeah, if I'm not holding it for you, you don't really care. He might give it a four. He's not even looking at it. He wants to get down. I can help you down. Watch out, watch out. There we go. <gasps> yeah, he's such a good little reviewer. Yes, you work so hard. What we're gonna do is start prepping our dinner. Last night, it was deluxe, right? We had the puppioli, it was amazing. You're probably like, that's basically human food that you're feeding a dog. I feel like you cheated it. And, I, and I, I can, I feel you on that. Something that's gonna look a little bit more like dog food tonight, we are making a porridge loaf. All right, for our quick oats, I'm taking a, about two cups of water with chicken bouillon. We're gonna take our one cup of quick oats, throw it in. I love that crunch. Got turkey. We got our egg. If you remember, we had an extra yolk that broke yesterday. Well, coming in handy today. And then I have extra egg whites to add. Oh, this basil is sad. And now is where you get to add in any spices and flavors that you want to add. I'm adding turmeric to this. It says in small amounts. And since he's gonna have such a small amount and I'm putting a small amount in, I feel good about that. and just a little bit of salt. I'm excited that dogs can have turmeric. This is gonna be weird though. I did turmeric and basil. That's a combo. Oh God, this can't be. Mm. With that, I'm gonna add the carrots in and then I'm gonna add in my celery on top. I felt like maybe having this division of the celery and carrots will look nice as a presentation. This looks like dog food. It definitely looks like it. We're gonna take um, scary porridge turkey loaf, dog loaf, and put it in the oven at 400. 45 minutes. Let's try and burn something down. Let's go. Let's just see where we're at. Oh. The internal temperature of our questionable porridge loaf is way above the 165. So we are good to go. I'm gonna let it rest. Well, it's definitely a loaf and you can see it's separated here. So that's good. Well, I'm only doing it once, so. <laughs> okay, so it's a turkey loaf, definitely loafy. And I thought there'd be more layers in this. Oh, I don't like that sound it's making. Okay, oh. Okay, wow, it kind of broke. I feel like it could, it could be better with, with the ricotta maybe. What if that's the magic touch right there? That made it weirder. I'm not gonna do that. I decided I can't serve this turkey loaf yet. It doesn't feel complete. I'm going to attempt to make 
a vegan gravy of some sort. <sighs> Man, this is gonna be weird. I'm gonna take rice flour, some mustard, some soy sauce, and make some sort of brown gravy. Wow, that really looks like dog food, doesn't it? Oh boy, that is, that is thick and heavy. Yes, my sweet, sweet baby. What I have for you this evening is a porridge turkey meatloaf. Take a bite and let me know what you think. Oh, you don't like it? But I made it for you. It's good, no? Oh no. You know what I mean? I feel like I failed you. This is the first time he's actually not even eating it. I'm gonna say with the gravy, which he, he doesn't have on his because I'm worried about the salt in it. It's actually not that bad. Your breast smells so bad though. It's like making me think that that's what this tastes like. Okay, I'm giving myself it really, it's not, it's not pretty. It looks like dog food. Ew, I feel like you're giving this a two. Can I, do you want to be hand fed? Do you want it still? Okay, so you, you're, you want to be hand fed. What if it's on the, out here? Okay, so you will eat it. I wonder if this is how my mom felt every time she made meatloaf. I think I'm gonna give myself a six because I think this was actually sticking to every single rule. I'm pretty sure Gus could have the gravy. I'm just being a little cautious about it. But this is a complete like dog meal that doesn't taste terrible. And that to me is the standard I'm trying to hit. Would you see this on the menu anywhere? No. Would you make this for yourself on a normal night? Probably not. I'm gonna give myself actually a five. <laughs> I think presentation wise, it looks really sad and scary, but also at the same time, it looks a little impressive that I did, that I made this. Gus seems fine. He doesn't seem like, he seems happy enough. So, okay, you may be excused. Considering I'm actually eating very healthy foods and I'm eating it very much like wholly, I do feel like I should feel better like my my energy level i feel like should feel stronger and i mean i feel kind of healthier i think from doing this so far i mean it, if anything it's taught me to like that dogs eat way cleaner than humans do <sighs> that's day two for you oh man am i aging I, my back hurts what's happening nice work babe you're really killing it. <laughs> Day three of doggy diet, eating like my dog Gus. Oh, I am so tired. I'm imagining I'm so tired, one, because Gus woke me up around three in the morning last night. Of course, during the shoot, I would get pink eye. It's like whenever I'm the most stressed and the most like go, 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 my body rejects it all. <laughs> Meanwhile, I feel so exhausted. And what I'm realizing is it's because I haven't been having caffeine because dogs can't have caffeine. Hey buddy. Hey, so mom's a little tired and I wanted to know if I'm allowed to have coffee. He's gonna take two squirrels. One is yes and one is no. This squirrel is yes, mom can have coffee. This squirrel is no, mom can't have coffee. Okay, Gus, can mom have coffee? <gasps> oh, you're so sweet. Mm. Okay, now I can get started with my day. I'm gonna start with something that I'm pretty sure won't be a failure. We're gonna do cauliflower. I can't say the word without I really hate cottage cheese. We're gonna make cauliflower, cottage cheese, egg, muffin cups. I hate the texture of cottage cheese. So I'm hoping that if I just mix, mix, mix it together, it won't be so um, clumpy and um, yeasty looking. What I'm gonna do is take the cauliflower, 
and chop it up even more into small pieces. I'm gonna put it in some water, put it in a microwave safe bowl, put it in the microwave for a bit to let it break down. Drain off any water that you have that's extra. You don't need this to be a super gloopy, watery mess. We're then gonna take the cauliflower, pulse it, Do you want to try some? It's just cauliflower. Yeah. Do you like cauliflower like that? Okay, you ate that. That's a good sign. That is a great sign. So from there, we're gonna take the cauliflower, our eggs, our cottage cheese. You're the best dishwasher ever. Now I do have mozzarella that I bought. I'm trying to decide if I want to use this for this or if I want to use the cheddar, but I might just do a mixture of both. How much of it is even really dairy is the question. Pasteurized milk, cheese culture. Mm, okay. Vegetable color. Wait. Oh, fascinating. Maybe I should Google Bonato for dogs. These latter cheeses contain a vegetable dye called Bonato, which can cause seizures in some dogs. Interesting. Okay, so we're not gonna use the cheddar cheese. <sighs> wow, Gus, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. And a turmeric in here. Just a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. I'm gonna take my moths, add it all in. So we have our two in here. I'm gonna take these, put them in the oven, 400 degrees. I'm gonna check on it in 20 minutes and see where they're at. What I've decided is I have extra ground turkey from yesterday from our rest in peace turkey loaf. And I'm gonna take what we have left because it's not that much to really incorporate in anything else. And I think I'm gonna make it like super crispy on my skillet and have it as a little topper on the egg muffins because I'm a little concerned that the flavor is gonna be pretty mellow. What's funny is this actually looks like dog food kind of, right? Gus, I did it. I did it. Can you believe it? It doesn't look terrible. Look at the mozzarella on there. It looks like pizza almost. Add the egg cups. Didn't they? Egg cups looking a little, they've looked a little better. Okay, Gussie, wait, 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 before we eat, I made you a collie egg cheese cup with a little bit of turkey. And I tried to crisp it up for you nicely. And there's some basil in here as well. Hmm. I don't mind this. I'm gonna cheat and add some salt. Oh, it's so much better with salt, Gus. I'm so sorry you can't have this. You don't like it? I really thought, are you serious? Gus. You don't like it? Or is it the bowl? Do you not like this bowl anymore? You wanna be ham fed. Okay, yeah, you like it. You just need it to be handheld. Got it. Feel you on that. The melty cheese on top, the mozzarella. Mmm. It's adding a little bit of a chew just because it's hardened and I don't mind it at all. The meat, extremely necessary, needed something savory. I wish I was able to add like a garlic or onion flavor in this. That's really what's missing, but it's dog food. Dogs can't have garlic and onion. If I served the skillet to someone and told them it was a low carb keto skillet, they would enjoy it. If I could add hot sauce or some sort of, if you like ketchup, it just needs a little oomph to it. I'm gonna give myself a 7.3 on this, 7.3 bones. I can't tell if you're like feeling like a six on it. Here, 
This is how we'll decide. This is a six and this is a seven, okay? I'm gonna put them equidistant. Which one do you want, six or seven? Six and then seven. I'm gonna eat this. I'm just gonna add more meat to it and add some hot sauce. I don't mind it. Okay, I'm gonna make this King Arthur's recipe. It's not mine. I can't even claim to know much about bread. If you've never made bread before and you're terrified of it, this is the easiest recipe I've ever used. And even my failure was still pretty good the first time I tried it. Coat your hands with olive oil, like a little massage. Mmm. Oil up for this. All right, we're gonna take our dough. It's very happy. And we're gonna let it rest at room temperature. <sighs> we are back from our afternoon walk, but I'm already starting to think about dinner and what I wanna make. And what I'm thinking right now is I'm going to take a classic thing that vets tell you to make for your dog when they're not feeling well, which is chicken and rice meatballs. You take brown rice or white rice and just chicken breast and you just bake it in the oven. You completely shred it all apart and then you put it into a food processor and make it this one big messy thing. And I'm also thinking about making a carrot gnocchi. I forgot I bought the one potato. So I'm gonna take the one potato, bake it. I'm gonna take the carrots and I'm gonna grate them. Do we like carrot juice? Carrot juice. Do we think it tastes good? Oh. It tastes like someone just baby mama baby birded me and chewed all the carrot juice and then just spit it in my mouth. Wow, you could probably like sell this at an art store. It'd be like, rage. And someone would buy it. It's problematic, maybe. And then I'm gonna take the carrots and put them in the food processor. You know what I realized? Maybe I do need to put some of the carrot juice back in. I was worried it was gonna be too wet, but now it's not wet enough. Why is it that anything I put into this bowl just immediately screams dog food? We want that internal temperature to hit 165 and it's well past it. So now we can just let it rest. Let me see what herbs and spices I can use. I wanna put something in this chicken because it's just gonna be so bland. Okay, so I can use thyme, it says, and I can use oregano. Monsieur? Thoughts? Yeah? Good? While we're over here, our bread has been resting for two hours, so we can take a look at it. <laughs> that is amazing. Look at that. Oh, look how bubbly it is. I think maybe I'll save this for the last day. Once the potato is nice and cool and I can actually scoop it all out, I'm gonna take that potato mix, put it into the food processor and just mix it all together. Wow, that is smooth. That is beautiful. Does it look good? I mean, it looks like mushy rice, because that's what it is, but I think we can make some meatballs out of this. I'm gonna scoop the chicken, rice, and egg white mixture into a tablespoon and just make about like a one inch size meatball. I might put them back in the oven just to see if they will brown up at all. I can boil the water for our carrot gnocchi. Would I boil the water? You guessed it. I'm going to add chicken bouillon to it because I really don't have many places to add in flavor. There's no way that. There we have it. Our carrot gnocchi. The gnocchis that kind of got overcooked. <laughs> they kind of look like those cheese balls that you get at bars.
Here we go. Oh, I'm so sweaty. What I've prepared for you this evening is a carrot potato gnocchi and a chicken breast and brown rice meatball. Bon appetit. Yeah. Mm hmm. Have at it, buddy. I'm realizing you don't like this bowl. Here you go. Here's your gnocchi. Mm hmm. Gosh, that gnocchi is so good. The chicken and brown rice meatball is very lackluster, pretty dry, bland, great if you're having an upset stomach. I can see why the vet tells us to feed our dogs this when they're not feeling well. I tried to make it really crispy on the bottom. It got a little bit of a brown crisp, but it's just missing more of a savory flavor and more seasoning. However, Gus, th this gnocchi is bomb. Mine is crispy because I put butter on it. The brown butter, the carrot, you don't even really taste the carrot, just a little bit of earthiness, but Wow, I would make this up for a date. It's so good. Okay, the gnocchi gets a 10 out of 10. I don't, it doesn't even need any seasoning. The meatballs get like a four. What do you think, Gus? I don't know what Gus is giving it. Zach, feel free to add in whatever rating you think he's giving it based off of his reaction. I'm actually gonna eat this whole thing. I'm very impressed with myself. Wow. Oh, I'm sweaty. I'm gonna clean the kitchen. Take him for his evening walk, and I'm gonna shower. I feel so gross. <laughs> we are in day four of doggy diet. I'm still extremely sleepy, and my whole body aches. So far, eating this doggy diet has been kind of nice for my stomach. It seems like eating this like berry bland purified basic food is really helping and i feel like maybe that's the trick <laughs> maybe that's why our dogs are always so happy they're eating you know food as, as 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 simple as it can be we have like five bananas left so i'm thinking about making an oatmeal bake with a bunch of bananas on top and maybe i can get them caramelized somehow so what we're gonna do first is take about two cups of quick oats throw it into our bowl Take about a teaspoon of baking powder, mix, mix, mix. And from there, we're gonna just combine it until it looks happy. No. It's that kind of day. It's fine. I'm gonna add a That's probably two tablespoons of peanut butter. How clean do we think the other side is? Let's see. Oh, pretty clean. Good work. Great day for you. Really happy for you. It's probably two egg whites. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more liquidy. I'm worried that it's too dry. sad day. Not only is it because it's Monday and I'm on day four, my thumbnail, which I've been de trying desperately, desperately to save, is officially broken. This thumbnail has been with me for so many days and now it's just broken. I really like to have a little funeral for it. So that's about 15 minutes in. It needs a little bit more time than that, a lot more time than that. And to give this a little bit more pizzazz, I'm gonna take some of the remaining strawberries I have and just kind of put them around the banana so it makes it like, just look a little bit more presentable. I'm gonna drizzle just a smidge of maple syrup on mine. I was just getting ready to call you. Did you wanna do the next taste test? Oh, stretch, you're tired. Oh, you're not sure. Come here. Okay, here you go. That's your little taste test beforehand. Here we go, Gus. Uh-uh, not yet. Gussie, what I have for you today is some banana, oatmeal, and strawberry. Oh wow, this is bland. This is really dry. Oh man, that's really, really dry like a really sad banana bread. I mean, it's not bad, just not. 
My mouth is so dry. Are you thirsty? It's so crumbly. I don't like it. I'm giving myself a three. I don't even know if I deserve a three. I was really hopeful for this one. It looked pretty. Just because it's pretty doesn't mean it's gonna be worth your time, you know? Are you questioning every decision ever? I feel like you liked this one more than I did. What I'm realizing is for Gus to really like something, I have to not like it. The drier and blander it is, the more he's enjoying it. Do you want my strawberry? Her. You got a strawberry. Do you like strawberries? <laughs> oh, I failed on all attempts. I'm sorry. I'll try better. I'll do better for dinner. Thank you. Give me a kiss. No? I love you. <sighs> Some days just be like that. All right, after that failure of a breakfast, I refuse, refuse to fail on dinner tonight. I realized we have a good amount of veal left, so I'm gonna make a stuffed veal roll. We have so much dough in the fridge right now. I'm gonna take that dough. What I'm doing is making a the no-need baguette. I'm gonna start cutting up some of my celery, my carrots. It'll add a texture, a color, I don't know. While I have the oven at 450, I'm gonna put some carrots in there as well. I'm gonna drizzle some oil on them and do a little bit of cinnamon. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper on them as well. I'm gonna take my cinnamon, salt, pepper, carrots, and just put them in the oven with the bread. Let's see how this bread is looking. Oh boy, puffy, lovely. What I need to do is slash it, and I'm gonna do it on a diagonal, and then I'm gonna spritz it with some warm water, and then we're gonna bake it. It's looking good. It's like a little golden carrot fry. It's toasty. The cinnamon and salt together makes it this perfect combination of savory sweet in your carrot. I love the really darkened bits because it's a little bit crunchy and chewy. I guess I'm supposed to show this with Gus. Here we go. Here we go. Was that a good snack? Was that a good snack? Yeah? I think you liked that. Is it sad that the best thing I've ate all week is a carrot? Looks golden and toasty. Going to give this bread about 30 minutes to cool off and maybe it'll be cooking a little bit on the inside still. It's been like two hours, so the bread is fully done. So our bread loaf is done, ready to go. I'm gonna cut into it. We got bread. We got bread. This is the ricotta from earlier this week. Here we go. Wow. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this bread, cube it up. We need about two cups or so for our stuffing. I love bread so much. It's time to make the stuffing. Carrots. Now it's time that we add in our bread. Since we're trying to keep things a little bit on the low fat side, we're gonna do that chicken bouillon water combo. I have some cottage cheese left, so I'm gonna put that in here and see if that helps give it a little bit more of an oomph. You heard me talking about something that tastes good? It does taste good. You want a bite? You want to try? You want to tell me if it's good? You like it? Ooh, it fell on the ground. Does it need more salt, more pepper? You can't really have any more than that though. We are into our final steps of our veal stuffing roll up. What I'm gonna do next is take the veal that we have left, put it between two pieces of parchment paper and flatten it out. Once I feel like it's good and rolled out, I'm gonna cut it into strips 
And from there, I'm gonna try to put in our stuffing. I think I have to put the bread in the food processor. I didn't wanna do it, but I think I have to. What I'm gonna do next is take the ricotta and pipe it across the veal. <laughs> These are so ridiculous. There we have it. Veal bread roll-ups. Terrifying. I think. Oh, this one already came undone. I think what I've been missing all week are carbs. So far, everything we've been making is kind of like low-carb keto-esque, it feels like. I've been missing actual bread, real pasta, and this is so delicious. It's yeasty. For some reason, it tastes like beer cheese to me. It tastes like Thanksgiving. I really don't even care if, this, if the veal doesn't turn out okay because this stuffing is a win for me. I know, you're hungry, aren't you? Are you hungry? Is it time for dinner? We're gonna let it cool down for like five minutes and then we can eat, all right? No. Five, five minutes, you can wait five minutes. You ready? Gus, what I have for you today is veal with, with stuffing and carrots and celery. You are really difficult, aren't you? Okay. Mm, that's mine. I worked very hard on this one. Not that I didn't work hard on the other ones, but I worked especially hard on this one. Okay. Wow, you liked it. You liked it a lot. You want a breadcrumb? I'm, I gave you some extra breadcrumbs. Wow, you really liked it. That, you're a fiend for it. I wish the ricotta was plain. The mint and honey with this dish is not necessary. It's actually kind of turning me off from it. But the veal and the stuffing, just the veal and the stuffing on its own without the ricotta, it's truly delicious. I think the presentation is beautiful. I'm giving myself a 9.1. Gus, what would you like to give me? This is a nine and this is a 10. And you choose which one. Or no, this is a nine and this is a 9.5. Damn. I really would make this again for myself. I would just take out the mint ricotta, but I would, I would make this again. I think it's really, it's a good look. It is my last day of eating like my dog. And it is so frustrating to have many days in a row of feeling slightly full but never satisfied. So I'm extremely excited that it's our last day. I am not dressed up for the occasion for it to be our last day. I actually have to go to get my driver's license this morning. So I'm gonna try to make a breakfast really quick. I'm gonna finish this last day strong. So what I'm thinking for breakfast is to make pumpkin banana waffles. One of the huge ingredients for dog food in general is pumpkin. When your dog's not feeling well, if you're not giving them eggs or chicken and rice, you're giving them pumpkin. It's something that growing up, one of my dogs was always, always sick. And we always end up putting like a dollop of pumpkin on his food. We have two bananas left, so one banana for this. So I'm gonna do pumpkin. Cinnamon. Some rice flour. Once you get past the slightly burning plastic scent of this very, very cheap waffle maker, it kind of smells like a fall morning. Come here, waffle. Oh, it's so cute. That's a perfect one for Gus. Yes? Okay, wanted to put that on top. 
I felt like that made it look pretty. What I have made for you this morning is pumpkin banana waffles. Now they're gluten free as well. Mm -hmm. I thought of everything for you. Okay, here, put on this. So much for presentation. So what I was thinking for this, Gus, was it would be perfect for a fall morning. Is it good? I don't taste any pumpkin. Zero pumpkin flavor. If I was gonna make this again, I would add pumpkin pie spice to it. It needs a more pronounced flavor. You don't taste pumpkin. It just tastes like a standard waffle. I do like the rice flour. It's much more of a soft, almost like a, a soft brownie. I would totally make this again. I would just add a ton of pumpkin spice and vanilla. Okay, what's our review of this? What's our ranking? I'm very meh, it's fine. I'm gonna give it a 7.2. Gus, what would you like to give the rating? Here, right, I make them equal, equal distant. Five, six, seven. What's your rating? Which one are you gonna eat first? Oh? He went for the six and then changed his mind to a five. Okay. Oh, but then you went to a seven. And then you go for the six. We done? I'm sad, it's our last breakfast together. I'm gonna miss it. He doesn't care, he doesn't care. You gonna clean up for me while I go? Do you wanna clean up for me? No? Mm, okay, yeah. Can't get those paws dirty, I agree. Hello, I'm back. Not super feeling awesome right now. And it is time to make our final meals. We have a good amount of our dough left. I'm going to take that all out, roll it out, and I'm gonna attempt to make a dog bone baguette. And we will see what it actually looks like. I'm not sure if it's gonna actually look like a dog bone baguette, but I'm hoping. And what I have left of the groceries for us to work with, I have one more chicken breast. I have a lot of waffles left. I have a can of sardines, carrots. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. I think I might like shred the chicken and put some anchovy in it. Make it maybe I'm gonna make like a Caesar shredded chicken thing and then put it on some bread, make a sandwich, a chicken, a Caesar chicken salad sandwich. I don't know. Something that I realized that I really wanted to make this week and I haven't are pup cakes. I actually made Gus for his first birthday um, these very dry, sad pup cakes. And I really wanna make it this time, but fix it up a bit. The way that they're made a lot of the times are just super dry and sad. So I'm gonna try to make a moist pup cake that has a decent amount of flavor. I'm gonna pack it with banana and peanut butter and just see if I can make it so that a human enjoys it. So let's make the pup cake batter while we're waiting for our bread to rise. May I say that this is the most action my mashing, my ugly, ugly purple masher has ever gotten. I'm just gonna add a shit ton of peanut butter in. Oh wait, that's way, that's way too much oil. Is this crazy to try to take it out? Actually, that kind of worked. Whatever, that's fine. I'm putting it right over the bowl because I live a chaotic life. And here's a half teaspoon of baking powder. A pinch of sugar. One other thing I'm gonna do in advance is make the frosting for pup cakes. If you Google frosting for pup cakes, there's a bunch out there. Some of them have cream cheese in them. Some of them have mashed potatoes in them to give them that whipped look. Gus cannot have cream cheese. He will literally himself. And if he does it, I probably will because I'm also lactose intolerant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my remaining banana, some peanut butter, Greek yogurt, and honey, and I'm gonna blend it all together. Do you want to do you want to try the frosting? You want to try the frosting? Oh, you do. You really okay? Yeah, your eyes are doing the thing where they're just really intense. Okay. 
our frosting bag. Oh, it feels so loose. I'm gonna put this in the fridge and hope it stiffens up. You know what I realized? I left out our bread from yesterday and it's pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do is make some breadcrumbs. I think breadcrumbs could be a nice little texture, like a crunch. really dry and crunchy, like almost hard to pinch it between your fingers. Just when you think I'm just gonna put it in the oven and be done with it, I realize I have my peanut butter. I have a good amount of peanut butter left and I don't wanna waste it. So I wanna try to do a peanut butter swirl. Nope, nope, nope. That was a bad idea. Is this a terrible idea? I think the peanut butter is too thick. Maybe I use some of the oil. Nope. Okay. Never mind. Those ones will just have extra peanut butter in them. It doesn't. It's not even. Why did I bother? Can't believe I'm saying this, but it's mayo time. Also, can I talk about how by the end of this week, I have broken both of my thumbnails fully off. This is called dedication. Egg into the food processor. Let's make our homemade mayo. Okay. Ooh, yummy. Love those sounds. Tablespoon of my vinegar. Then we are slowly adding in oil. This apparently is the only part that really, really matters is that we need to emulsify and thicken up this bad boy. All right, little drops of oil in. Okay. Slowly add in our oil. Did I make mayo? Let us see. Oh, hey. Okay. That's mayo. I made mayo. Oh, that's so easy. Is that okay? You don't mind it? I made my own mayo. I feel so proud. Don't believe that it says Mac. It's mayo. Okay, about to check on pupcakes. Now that our pupcakes are done, I put the popsicle stick through it and nothing came out. I wish I had toothpicks because I definitely destroyed that pupcake, but I'll just put more frosting over it. I'm gonna put the temperature up to 450 for our bread. I'm gonna make my chicken Caesar salad dressing. What I need is some anchovies, which I got. This is definitely a huge rule break where I could see if you just want to stop watching the video now, I understand. This is the, my remaining oil left. Okay, it has a little bit of garlic and onion, so I need to be super sparing with this because garlic and onion is a huge no-no for doggies. Salt. Hello, anchovies. Oh man, I should have chopped this with not a butter knife. And it goes. This is the last time I'm using the food processor, I promise. It has to be. I want to just stop putting things in here, like desperately. Okay, I don't even care. I would like to thank my food processor for really getting me through this week. Our last thing that we are putting in the oven today are our dog bone baguettes. Oh my God, they look terrifying. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've really made a terrible decision, haven't I? Scoring. And then I'm putting in the oven for about 25 minutes at 450 degrees. If neither of them look like dog bones, I'm gonna be so upset. I realized I lied to you guys. I'm not done with the oven. I'm gonna take the waffles, I'm gonna attempt to slice them in half and see if I can open them and then toast them. They were a little weak and soggy, but I think that they could be kind of good like sandwich buns. I don't know. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, the smaller dog bone, Looks like it's ready, but the other one that was a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, I'm gonna give it another six minutes. Look, it actually kinda looks like a dog bone. 
We are in the final stretch. We are almost done. So all I have to do is make the actual sandwich innards. So what I'm gonna do is take the grilled chicken breast that I have left, microwave it real quick to heat it up. I'm gonna put that in a bowl. I'm gonna take our Caesar dressing that I made, put that in there. We're gonna add some chopped celery. We're gonna take some of our mayo, and put that in. I'm assuming that means it smells good. Little baby piece of chicken. Good or no? You know what? That tastes like Caesar. It actually does taste like Caesar. Gus, I surprise myself sometimes. You know that? What a strange, strange place to be in. I know, I know. It's a little waffle sandwich. It's so cute. Fishy, crunchy, chickeny. The breadcrumb. I put the breadcrumb on. I meant to put them in here to add texture. I'm gonna add the breadcrumbs onto the top of these because I forgot. And I hope that Gus forgives me. We're almost to the finish line. What I need to do now is take our cupcakes, frost them, decorate them, keep them in the fridge for a little bit just so that the frosting doesn't fully melt because the kitchen's kind of warm right now. May I help you with something? Am I cooking correctly? Would you like a little bit of the frosting? I know, it's not thick enough, but I tried. I really did. Maybe that's a bad idea. I don't know. I'll make yours look cute. How about that? What if we take some dog treats and put them around it? Ooh, that looks fancy. I wish I got to be Gus Gus. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, one second. Almost done shooting the beauties and then you can eat, okay? I promise I'll be so quick. This is the most deranged, unhinged week of my fing life. I'm holding dog bone baguettes and acting like it's normal. I'm talking to my dog like it's normal. Okay, now it is time to plate. Appetizer, dinner, and dessert. Oh my gosh, I did it. Heck yeah. made for you a dog bone baguette please don't be bored with a leftover ricotta filling I wish it was sourdough but I didn't have the time to make it the mint ricotta tastes just like how it did before super fresh I would say it's pretty standard I'd give it like a 6.5 up next is one of my favorites I've made for you guys it is our waffle from this morning but shredded chicken Caesar dressing with mayo, homemade mayo, carrot, and celery. May I break this apart for you so that you may enjoy it. Here. That's pretty good. It's just like a texture heaven. Caesar in there, the mayo is creamy. You got savory going on. Wow. I would make this again. It's delicious. My Caesar dressing is a little fishy, like a little too anchovy, but I don't mind it. Am I going crazy? I feel like I'm now reviewing food as if I'm at TGI Fridays. I could fully be at a Chili's right now and not know. Wow. I'm giving myself a 9.8 on that. The pumpkin banana waffle is like a sweet and savory combo with the chicken. You can't even tell that this is <laughs> plain ass, boring ass, skinless, boneless chicken breast. It is so flavorful. I think I finally figured out the texture and flavor game for dog food. Okay, 
Last thing to try. This is what I'm the most excited for. I made you guys a pup cake. I can only give you half of the pup cake right now though because I don't wanna upset your stomach. A gluten-free peanut butter banana pup cake. The rest of it you can have for dessert later tonight. Oh, are you waiting for me? You're not waiting for me, are you? Okay, ready? Can we set a timer for this? This tastes way better than when I made it last time. Wow. Oh wait, last time I made a peanut butter pup cake thing, it tasted so dry and tasted like an actual dog treat that I felt really sad. This tastes like a, health, a healthy cupcake. Wow, the texture's there. I did it. It's light, it's fluffy, the peanut butter. I actually added more peanut butter than I should have. I'm realizing when people ask me why am I single, they're just gonna show this video to people. They're gonna be like, look what you're doing. You made a dog bone baguette and then you fed your dog like he's a celebrity. Well, it was a delight cooking for you this week. It takes so much time, energy, money to cook for your dog. I mean, let alone to cook for other people or yourself, but to have the privilege to be able to spend money on your dog in this way and have the time to cook for your dog in this way is i don't have the time or the money to be able to cook for my dog is what i'm trying to say it's a huge overhaul i don't think i'd be able to do this on a daily basis i've learned that dogs stomachs are highly sensitive and i've learned that when you can't play with flavor and spices <laughs> hey i'm almost done here when you can't play with flavor and spices you have to rely on texture like texture is the only thing you have going for you i think i've learned just how special and how important spices are <coughs> yes have you too here you can come here for the sign off i think we've both learned to appreciate each other even more i think what i've learned is like your stomach is super sensitive and my stomach is too and maybe i should be eating way more simpler foods and getting more creative with those simple foods. We could all probably pay more attention to the foods that we put in our body. But every once in a while, it's, it's fun to cook for your dog. But not every day. Did we tell people to subscribe? No? Okay. Comment, subscribe. Um, other than that, I'm going to take a very, very long nap with Gus and eat this dog bone baguette because I'm so proud of it. Wow. Incredible.